Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Shobha Nikam. In this video, I'll talk about boundary scan testing in VLSI, the most commonly used testing type in VLSI, very large scale integration where millions of transistors are present in single tiny chip and while manufacturing of ICs, faults can occur. I have prepared separate video about different faults and specifically stuck at faults. The link is given in the description box. Also, the videos related to other testing methodologies like path sensitization method, built-in self-test are also prepared and links are given in the description box. So, how boundary scan testing is different, how it is special? The best thing is it is board level testing. It means it is not related to single chip, but it can be used for testing of multiple chips. So if there are 10 ICs on single board, we can test all of them by using boundary scan testing and that too without connecting external probe. Suppose you wanted to test voltage at one particular point. What you'll do? You will take multimeter, then you will connect it over there and then you'll find out how much voltage is present. But you need to put DMM over there. You need a probe. But here in boundary scan testing without any probes, without any external hardware, we can test our chips after putting them on board. So it was standardized as IEEE 1149.1 JTAG in 1990. So JTAG stands for Joint Test Action Group. It uses additional test circuitry embedded in the chip boundary scan cells that sit between the core logic and IO pins. So when you think about IC, it has IO pins and at the center core logic is present. Core logic means what? Transistors are present, wires are present for connection of them. So what we need to test is we need to test our external pins as well as core logic. This boundary scan testing helps detect stuck at faults. Stuck at fault means input pin is stuck to one or not only input pin but any pin is stuck to one or stuck to zero. If any transistor is short circuited that is continuously on or open it means continuously off. In digital when we use transistors they act as switch either on or off. So they are continuously short or open or bridging faults and interconnect errors. So boundary scan testing is used for finding all these faults. It is used for internal and external testing. Used to test both internal logic of the chip and the connections between chips on board. So this is JTAG standard. So let's understand what JTAG is. So it is an industry standard interface for boundary scan testing. It defines tap controller test access port with dedicated pins and instructions for test control. So as chips are already on board, so board can act in normal mode and it can also act in test mode. Let's say I have an adder IC. So what if I'll use it for adding addition of two numbers. So in normal mode, it will simply take two inputs. It will add them and I'll get my output. But in test mode, it will not perform any other operation. We can only test its internal circuitry or it, we can test the connection between different chips. So the tap controller is very important in case of boundary scan testing. It takes all the decisions and that is why name is test access port. So it has total five pins, four are compulsory pins and one is optional pin. TDI pin stands for test data input. So it is serial input for test instructions and data. So we provide our test data through this TDI pin test data input. TDO is what obviously it is test data output. So we get output at TDO pin. Then extra hardware is present. It means pin and internal circuitry. One extra cell is placed and extra cell means flip flop. So at every pin one extra flip flop is kept. Free flop is a sequential circuit. So we need clock. So this is test clock. 
then test mode select as i told you it will work in normal mode like adder will add two numbers that is normal mode and in test mode we can test that ic so test mode select is for selection of mode and then test reset it is a synchronous reset for tap if you wanted to stop in between you can simply press reset button so see if i have four ic's let's say i have four ic's this is my test clock it is connected to all chips test mode select see test mode select is also connected to here all four ic's test clock is connected to all four ic's these thin lines indicates connections between the ic's so like in case of some of product form will have and gates and or gates and then outputs of and gates are connected to or gate so when we design digital circuit of course we connect outputs of some gates to inputs of another gates so these thin lines indicates those connections then in boundary scan testing we have this test data input and see this is that extra cell i was talking about in previous slide so this cell is placed and this black indicates internal hardware it means transistors are present internal wires are present gates are present and these are pins so in between io pins and internal hardware one extra cell is placed and when we combine flip and these cells are nothing but flip flops and when we combine flip flops it forms a register and when data shifts through those resistors it is called a shift register so test data input suppose i am sending one at the input side then see this goes through all these pins then it will go to my second ic then my third ic you can see the thick line then my fourth ic and here i'll get my test data output so if i'll send one what i should get at the output i should get one if no fault is present but if stuck at zero fault is present it means if any pin is stuck to zero or ground line because pins chips are very tiny in those tiny chip millions of transistors are present vdd line is present ground line is present so it is possible that any pin is will get shorted with zero or one so if i'll get one here i'm sending one no fault is present but if i'll get zero fault is present so see how tap controller actually takes all those decisions so i have taken this diagram from neil west book so this is tap controller test clock test mode select test reset are inputs to this tap controller then we have instruction register and we have data register so instructions are stored in instruction register and based on those instructions our data register will work so here this is test data input which is given to instruction register as well as data register so see ir instruction register selects the active data register so see what we can do in boundary scan testing we can test internal circuitry as well as the connections so when i don't want to test internal circuitry i just wanted to check the connections between ic's then i'll use this bypass register see no internal logic will get tested it will only it will bypass directly so, and when i wanted to test everything then i'll use boundary scan register bsr so boundary scan register tests captures data on io pins bypass register skips device in scan chain and instruction register it selects which register to be used and also instructions are given or stored in this register then i code id code register it holds device identity but this is optional register and custom register it is vendor specific fpga configuration and debug so jtag is not only used for uh, testing but it is also used for fpga and cpld programming so see instruction register holds the current instruction that dictates how the test access port controller should operate that is how tap controller should operate then it will also select which data register to to be activated for data transfer like bypass register for checking interconnection and uh, 
the boundaries can register for checking internal circuitry instructions can for example what instructions can be there select the boundary scan register uh, enable the bypass register those instructions will be there the instruction registers content is crucial for defining the testing sequence and how data flows through the device so there is instruction register then there is bypass register it is mandatory register and it is single bit register it effectively bypasses the device's internal logic and when activated it significantly reduces test time by allowing data to pass through the device without being processed by its core logic so it reduces time because we don't test internal or core logic we only test the external circuitry then data register which hold the data used during testing including boundary scan register and bypass register these two are data register so the extra cells we connect them together then it is called as boundary scan register because data flows through that register then id code register is optional holds the device's unique identification code then advantages of boundary scan testing are no physical probing is needed so it reduces reliance on in circuit test equipment access to hidden pins is also available this is standardized approach it is standardized by ieee as 1149.1 then multi device testing we can test multiple chips by connecting them in scan chain supports debug and programming and it saves the cost then there are of course disadvantages associated with any method so here disadvantages are extra silicon overhead of course we have added extra uh, flip flop at every pin so that is extra silicon overhead adds boundary scan cells and registers increases chip area and cost so it will occupy area on chip test speed limitation shifting large scan chains can be slow for big systems and security risk jtag port can be exploited by attackers if not disabled or protected then applications of this boundary scan testing are testing pcb interconnects in system programming debugging embedded systems system level testing field maintenance and production testing so it was all about boundary scan testing i hope you have understood the concept thank you so much for watching share it with your friends and don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much